Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. What is the world for coming in and NH for the disabled game reviews here? And this time I'm gonna the latest game of the Battle Royale subgenre. Can shop for one that chicken dinner? Will we be running for a solo to before this review even starts? Without without further ado, let's find out. The Battle Royale game has been a giga trend in recent years. The subgenre started out in the same way that the highly successful mobile subgenre kicked off. Nothing more than a mod. In this case, the highly successful zombie survival game H1Z1 released to the public in 2018. The majority of Battle Royale games somehow ended up quite popular. Even one of the EA's development studios, Respawn Entertainment, tried their hand in this highly successful trend with Apex Legends. This particular title was released in August 2021 and developed by China-based developers 24 Entertainment and NetEase Interactive Entertainment. The game is set in the fictional Morris Island. You pick a character from a roster of 14 characters, just leave guys more on that later on, then take to the battlefield with up to 60 other players to be the last man or team standing. The accessibility scores are as follows. But to kick things off, visibility give it 10.5. The assist section in the options menu has limited features in terms of colorblind options. You can customize the colors of the crosshairs when you're using a range of weapons, for example, repeated crossbow and muskets, i.e. the default color of the crosshair and the color of the crosshair when you're targeting an enemy. However, you can apply screen filters, which in turn makes this game a lot more accessible when taking this category into account. On top of that, there are no color-coded elements that will cause an issue for a colorblind player. The color scheme of your armor and items are colorblind friendly enough. The rarity ranges from grey, blue, purple to gold. These types of items indicate how durable, therefore effective, this weapon or armor is going to be. On ability, it's got a reasonably low age. This is where the majority of the criticisms of the game lie. There are no subtitles supported in this game, however, due to the nature of the game, i.e. Battle Royale, there is very little need for one. There is very little dialogue apart from the chatter from your teammates' heroes. These only happen when a particular hero is engaging an enemy or under attack, however, when a teammate comes or attacked by an enemy player, their status in the bottom left of the screen will flash red. Also, if global events were to happen, for example, when the corruption pretty much basically the storm in Fortnite will shortly to start to shrink or become more potent, on screen notifications will appear in the center of the screen. So, a player with a hearing impairment will suffer a very minor disadvantage when playing this game. Next up, Mobility 9.5. In terms of the console version, the bomb layers can be fully customized when using a controller. However, there is no customization options in terms of stick layouts. However, the PC version is like a night and day. The key bindings can be fully customized via the controls section of the options menu. The PC version also has controller support, which works in a co-pilot fashion. This allows a mobility impaired player to use a controller for a melee combat and your trusty keyboard and mouse for the rest. So in terms of this category, the PC version would be your best bet, provided your PC can handle it, as the PC version has the least issues. And the detailed breakdown is this. The PC scored 6 out of 5, and the console version scored a reasonably low 3.5 out of 5. And last but certainly no means least, gameplay I gave an 8.5. In terms of all the Battle Royale games out there, it's this game I will tolerate. This is because the game is the most unique of all. Instead of mindlessly gunning down every player that you will encounter during a match, this game has melee combat thrown in the mix. After all, the majority of the game's arsenal are in fact melee weapons, for example, daggers, nunchucks, and dual blades. Similar to all the other titles of the Battle Royale subgenre, the rarity of the item determines of its effectiveness. The rarer of the weapon or armor, 
the more effective that weapon is. For example, gold armor can soak up a lot of punishment before breaking, and the grey staff has very limited amount of hits before the weapon's durability wears out. When that happens, the weapon's attack strength is drastically reduced, therefore giving you a massive disadvantage when fighting other players. Inventory management is also key in this game. For example, weapon repair kits restore the durability of a selected weapon. Armor powder, as the name suggests, repairs your armor, and Vitalia heals your wounds. Soldier gives passive stat increases, for example, attack strength and resistance when being hit with melee weapons. This game has the bog standard solo, duo and trio modes with other players online, or AI controlled bots however, with all games for the battle royale subgenre, the game does get repetitive after X amount of matches, as there is very little content to make this game diverse. In summary, Naraki Bleed Point is a refreshing take of the battle royale subgenre. The roster of characters with their own roles and abilities reinforces the teamwork mechanic in which this game is built on. For example, Karumi is a healer. She can create a link with a teammate, healing him or her over time. She can also teleport to that player's location in a pinch, allowing to assist her teammates in combat by taking her opponents by surprise. This is important as team composition as an important part of the game. So if you're looking for a Souls-esque Battle Royale game to play over the summer, this game could be a good choice. And the overall score is 95.25%. See you guys in the next review. Spartan Commander 1988. Rollout Spartan Century.